In this video, I'm sharing my technique on how to make the perfect turkey on a pellet grill using all of the best tips and tricks I found through my experimentation throughout the years that produce the juiciest turkey with the crispiest skin, and we're using the best pellets you can possibly get to give your turkey a deep smoke flavor. So let's get smoking. Okay, let's start with the turkey that we're gonna be using for this cook. I'm using Butterball, and I actually suggest that you guys use Butterball. It's a really good turkey that's already been pre-brined. It's pre-injected with salt, it's got phosphate, in it to increase its water holding capacity and it's the best turkey that I've found that produces the best results every time. I've tried farm fresh turkeys and brining turkeys that weren't pre-brined. I've tried different brands and they always tend to come out a little bit drier than these butterball turkeys. So we're just going to open this up and it's got some nice easy holes in it that you just kind of open it up and you don't even have to cut it. I like to have some paper towel underneath because a lot of liquid comes off the turkey as soon as you open it up. Now, fresh paper towel, because as soon as we open up the cavity, we're gonna get more liquid coming out of it. Just take that skin flap off the legs, spread the legs open a little bit. And usually when I defrost my turkeys, they're still a little bit frozen on the inside, which is okay. It'll defrost really quickly in the smoker. So now I'm removing the giblets. This is actually the tail that was stuffed in there. I'm just gonna put that to the side. You can saute all these giblets and then put them in the oven and bake them and roast them for a few hours and then you can use all of the pan drippings and make a nice gravy with those so that by the time your turkey's done, you have an awesome gravy. Now, if there's any little roots of the feathers inside of the skin, you can just pluck them out pretty easily. Usually I find one or two on all of these turkeys. And sometimes all of the giblets are in the cavity, but sometimes you'll get a package of some of the giblets that are in the neck cavity. And in this case, that is exactly what's happening. So. Make sure you check the neck cavity and fully empty the main cavity of the turkey because you don't want to be cooking a turkey with the giblet still inside of it, especially when they're in these little packages. Okay, so that just pops right out. We're going to save that for making gravy. And now we've got a big skin flap here that we don't need. So I usually go right about there and I snip that off. I don't want to go too high because the skin tends to stretch up during the cook and we wanna cover that area. And now you can see at the base of the breast here, it's exposed a little bit with the skin. So I'm just pulling the skin down. And now here's a really good tip. I like to inject with melted butter. I find that it gives the turkey a really awesome buttery flavor and it adds a lot of moisture to the interior of the meat when you're slicing it. And I just get rave reviews whenever I inject my turkeys with butter. So I'll just start at the base of the breast here. I'll give it an injection, backing off slowly as I come out. Then I'll do the other side. Give that an injection and then the outer area of the breast on the right side. And we'll do the same to the other side. And now we're doing the dark meat. So for the leg, I like to go right in under the thigh here, under the uh, drumstick right where the skin is exposed, pierce through into the meat without piercing the skin. Give that an injection. You can see how it kind of puffs up a little bit. It puffs up as the butter goes all throughout the meat and underneath the skin. And it creates kind of a little gap between the skin and the meat that just has liquid butter in it. And that is gonna help crisp up the skin and it's also gonna add a ton of juiciness and flavor. And finally, we're gonna get the thigh. So I'm just poking in right about there, giving that half a needle of injection. Doing the other side. Now I'm going to remove one glove so I have a clean hand and I'm grabbing some kosher salt and we're just going to do a light coating on the outside of the turkey. Now you can use any type of rub that you want but I highly recommend that you just stick with something simple, not a lot of sugar in it, not a lot of pepper and ideally just do what I'm doing and just use salt because at the end of this cook, we're going to do a high heat sear method to crisp up the skin, and that is going to burn up any rub that has high sugar content or a lot of pepper in it. So it's best to just stick with something simple and just use salt. That way you're gonna get a nice flavor profile on the outside of the turkey. You're not gonna get any burnt flavors. And finally, I'm going to apply a little bit of baking powder to the outside of the turkey skin. This is really interesting and it has some science behind it. The baking powder raises the pH of the turkey skin, which is mainly made of collagen. 
and it increases the solubility of the collagen, which basically is just fancy scientific terms for it makes the skin crispier and it makes it more tender. And it also increases the surface area. You'll see in a minute as the baking powder sucks up some of the moisture from the turkey skin, that it's going to start bubbling and creating more surface area. And it's also drying out the surface of the turkey skin, which is also going to help it crisp up. So I like to apply the baking powder about an hour before I put the turkey on the smoker. You can do it the night before and leave it uncovered in the fridge to further dry out and for that baking powder to work its magic. And it'll actually be more effective than just leaving it for an hour. But I find that for the purposes of convenience, I just apply it an hour before and it works just fine for me. Next, I'm filling my pellet grill with Smoke and Pecan pellets. Thank you, Smoke and Pecan, for sending me these and sponsoring this video. These pellets are made of 100% pecan shells and they have the best smoke flavor of any pellet I've tried. And I've tried a lot of them. If you have trouble getting smoke flavor from your pellet grill, especially on shorter cooks, this is the pellet for you because it packs a powerful flavor that's really smoky and it's kind of sweet too. It's an interesting flavor. Most importantly for this video, it goes really well with turkey and your family is going to love it. You can get them using my link in the description section below and I highly recommend you do try these out for the holiday season. Now this is optional, but I'm also going to use some smoke and pecan shells to add even more flavor to this turkey. My Woodwind Pro has a smoke box so you can burn wood chunks right over the burn pot and it's perfect for these smoke and pecan shells. So I'm filling the box about halfway and letting those burn throughout the cook. And guys, I'm jumping in from the future here. I edited this segment in. If you guys want to win a free box of Smoke and Pecan pellets, you can enter via the link in the description section below. Smoke and Pecan is giving away a free box to a US resident and one to a Canadian resident. Again, the link to enter the contest is in the description section below. All right, let's get back to the video. Now I'm setting my Woodwind Pro to 160 degrees at smoke level 10, so that's as low as it will go. And we're gonna smoke this turkey low and slow for three hours to build up a nice smoke flavor on the skin. When you smoke at a lower temperature on your pellet grill, the pellets smolder more and they create more smoke. So that's why we're doing this three hour low and slow smoke period, just to build up some smoky flavor before we crank up the temperature. Now during that three hour low smoke period, I'm also spritzing the turkey every 30 minutes with equal parts water, apple cider, vinegar and soy sauce this is just to build up some extra flavor but most importantly it's to keep the skin moist so that the smoke can stick to it better and after three hours the turkey should have some nice color on it similar to this so I'm bumping up the temperatures to 300 degrees to finish it off this is also a good time to baste the turkey with some kind of liquid fat I just use vegetable oil because it's super easy but you could also just baste it with liquid butter it's really up to you the important thing is we have some fat on the skin to help it brown and crisp up around an hour later I started probing the breast and I do that every 30 minutes until it hit 150 in the deepest part of the breast. This one took around two hours at 300 degrees but yours could take a longer or shorter time so make sure you're probing very often after you bump temperatures to 300 degrees because the turkey can finish really quickly and if your breast meat goes above 165 then it's going to be kind of dry so make sure you keep checking it often. Also by the time the breast hits 150 the thigh should be well above 165 which is great because the fatty or dark meat needs a higher internal temperature to get tender and juicy. Now after resting the turkey for 30 minutes the final step is to crisp up the skin with a high temperature sear with my sous vide gun blowtorch. In a previous video I tested various methods of getting crispy turkey skin and this is hands down the easiest and best way to do it but in a pinch you could also use the broiler in your oven. The Grill Blazer sous vide gun is a premium culinary blowtorch and I highly recommend it but there are also much cheaper options on Amazon for as low as 20 bucks so using a blowtorch on your turkey isn't a crazy option to consider. You can also use a blowtorch for lighting pellet tubes or trays or lighting a charcoal grill so it's very versatile and you'll use it for other things besides just crisping up your turkey skin. All right this looks pretty crispy so let's cut into it and try it out. All right guys let's dig into this turkey and see if it truly is the perfect turkey. I'm just going to start on one side of the breast here and then I'm just slowly scooping away as I cut deeper. I'm going to cut this side of the thigh and then I'm just making a scooping motion along the rib cage to detach the breast from the rib cage. And look at that guys, super juicy, beautiful turkey breast. Looks delicious. And I'm going to cut into one of these breasts and let's see how crispy it is. First of all, you guys hear that? That is crispy, my friends. All right, let's start right here. And we'll just do some pretty thick slices. 
and I'll give you guys a look. Look at how juicy that is. That looks absolutely amazing. It is just dripping with juices. I love it. Let's try it out. Mm. It's so juicy, it's so tender, and when you bite through the skin, it's almost like biting through a little turkey potato chip. It just snaps and it just pops and dissolves in your mouth because it's so crispy. And then you get that smoke flavor from the smoke and pecan pellets. It's just an amazing flavor. Oh man. Hmm. Look at that guys. Look how juicy that is. Look at that. That is absolutely insane. That is a crazy amount of juice coming out of there. Now here is the thigh, some dark meat for you dark meat lovers out there. This looks even more juicy than the breast. This is absolutely insane. Look at that slice of thigh meat. That is so juicy. That looks so good. Oh. <laughs> Guys, this is the best pellet smoker turkey I've ever smoked in my life. It's so good. The skin is crispy. It's got that smoky flavor from the smoke and pecan pellets. It is super juicy, and I hope you guys try this technique at home. If you do end up trying this technique, let me know in the comment section below. Make sure to check out the sponsor of this video, Smoke and Pecan Pellets. That's also linked in the description section below. I will see you guys in the next video, and until then, happy smoking. Mmm. Oh my god, that's so good.